Okay, everyone, now that we have our two different cursors, um, however you created yours, that's the one you're going to use. But before we can use it in our code, we have to create, we have to make it a symbol, and then we have to export it for ActionScript. And the way you do that, um, well, I'm debating which one I should use. I guess I'll use the one I drew because it's mine. Anyway, whatever. So you're going to go to Insert, New Symbol, and you're going to call it whatever you want. It kind of makes sense, I guess, to call it Cursor. And then we're going to ex export it for ActionScript. And it's customary to call it the same thing, but with a capital C. Or actually, the variable that we're going to use is called cursor as well, with a lowercase c, and then the class is the same name with an uppercase c. So after you name it whatever you want, give it the class called cursor with a capital C, click OK. And when this pops up, just say OK. OK, so here's our cursor movie clip symbol. And we're going to take this, I'm oh, sorry, this one, again, it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to drag it on the screen and put it right over that plus sign. Again, if it's off a little bit, it's not going to matter, but I do kind of want it centered. So grabbing it with the mouse right now is kind of hard, but right now what I'm doing is pressing the up and down arrow keys on my keyboard, which move this thing around one pixel at a time. And it's a little bit easier to get it kind of centered. I mean, there it looks good. It might be off by a tad. I don't know if that looks better. Maybe that looks better. Okay, so let's leave it there. Go back to scene one. So this really isn't in the game at all yet. We have an actions layer. We have a background layer. We don't have a cursor layer. We're going to use action script to pull this cursor from uh, the library onto our game. So we're going to go to our actions layer, the first frame of it, and we're going to press F9. Again, I can't do that because it pauses my recording software, so I have to go the long way window actions. Okay, and then we're going to start typing in our code. So the first thing we're going to do is set up a variable. And the variable's name is going to be cursor, like we just talked about. And what type of variable is it? It's going to be a movie clip variable. And Flash likes to import that display movie clip. I'm just going to leave it there because it'll probably do it for you guys too. And then I'm going to go down two lines, and I'm going to set up my first function. And I'm going to say function initialize game. Remember, no spaces, so it's one word. We capitalize the first letter of the second word. We call that camel case, just to distinguish that we do know there is no such word as initialize game, that it's two words run together. And then we're going to say void semicolon, I'm sorry, no semicolon. Oh, and this has to be function, not functio, function. There we go. And then we're going to open our curly brace. When I hit enter on my computer, it gives me the closing curly brace, which I guess is an option that I have set, which I kind of like. Give myself some spaces. And then I'm going to say, what is my cursor variable equal to? So cursor, oops, cursor is equal to a new instance of the class called cursor. And then I, just because I said that I have a variable called cursor and it's equal to a new instance of this class called cursor, meaning give me a copy of that, that doesn't actually put it on the screen. So I have to add it with the add child statement. So add child, and what am I adding? I'm adding that thing called cursor which I just said it's an instance of that class cursor. And then I'm going to add an event listener to my stage so that whenever my mouse is on the stage, I can show up my cursor. So I'm going to say stage dot add event listener. And my tooltips are popping up, not my tooltips. My uh, code hints. So I'm just going to hit enter so I don't have to type the whole word event listener. So add event listener and it's going to be what type of event? It's going to be a mouse event and I can actually scroll through these to the one I want. I don't know if it's on there very easily. 
And, oh, actually, there it is. I want mouse move. So whenever my mouse moves, I want to do something. So mouse event, mouse move. And notice it imported the mouse event thing up here. So I have stage add event listener, mouse event dot mouse move. And what am I going to do? Well, I got to name some function. And I'm dragging my mouse around, and we called it cursor. So I'm going to call it drag and then cursor with a capital C only because it's two words together and I'm using camel case because it's good convention and then I close my curly brace which I'm hitting delete on my keyboard to bring that up so now I have to define my drag cursor function so function drag cursor it's an event there go my code hints and it's a mouse event I'm just going to type it mouse event and again void and then my open close curly braces and I'm just going to say cursor dot x is equal to the mouse X with a capital X there and I hate these upper and lower case ones especially when the letters don't change that much like the difference between a big D and a little D or a big G and a little G very very obvious a big E and a little E very obvious but the little X and the big X capital X sometimes it's hard to see but that's the convention so I'm using it cursor dot Y because a mouse has an X and a Y is equal to the mouse Y semicolon oops and then when do I want the game to start well I want the game to start as soon as I press control enter at this point later maybe we will add something to make it so that it doesn't start until we click but for right now if I just wanted to start as soon as the file is loaded I just have to say initialize game open close parentheses and semicolon so when I hit control enter the game should just start let's see I'll close out my coding window first just for the hell of it so control enter and I drag my mouse around and you can see my custom cursor following my mouse all over the place now I don't think you want to see the white arrow pointer of the mouse so one little code that we can add to do that but I left it there to begin with just so you can see it's following it around wherever I move okay, if I go off the screen it, missed it let's go but while I'm on the screen because we're dragging it whenever the mouse is on the stage that's the event listener that we added so you can see it following it so let's just go back and add that one piece of code to hide the mouse I'm going to have to go the long way because of my screen recording software. So in the initialize game function, after we add the cursor, let's say mouse dot hide. Open close parentheses, semicolon. Now this time when we play it, it works the same way, but you don't see the white pointer. All you see is the crosshair. So when we're going to shoot on something, You'll just be seeing this thing, click, ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-slice. And so now we have a custom cursor moving around the screen. Next thing we'll do is start getting some things we can shoot at.